Hello, everyone, and welcome to MSK Unknown Case Series, case number 51. Here we have a frontal view of the right shoulder. And the question is, what pathology could have led to the finding scene? Is this could Paget's disease led to of this appearance, osteosarcoma, septic arthritis, or trauma? What pathology could have led to the finding scene? So what we're seeing here is an area of focal geographic serpiginous sclerosis involving the subarticular aspect of the humeral head here. Notice that there's no articular collapse at the glenohumeral joint. There's no fracture. There's no subchondral fracture. Uh, just this geographic area of mixed sclerosis and lucency that's fairly well-defined and demarcated along the humeral head. So this is a nice case of avascular necrosis or osteonecrosis. And of the four findings that we see here, the only one that typically and characteristically leads to osteonecrosis is trauma. So tra traumatic causes is a very important cause for uh, osteonecrosis or avascular necrosis, typically in the patient population that I serve at University of Maryland because we are a shock trauma center, but there are a multitude of different causes of AVN. Uh, this, of course, is infarction of the bone or avascular necrosis where there's lack of blood supply going to the underlying uh, osseous structures. There are many common causes. So sickle cell disease would be the most common cause worldwide, but alcohol is by far the most common cause here in the United States of America. Now, other things like corticosteroids, trauma, as we discussed, Gaucher's disease, any collagen vascular disease, acute pancreatitis, as you can see, many causes for osteonecrosis. Uh, the key feature on imaging is to look for that geographic serpiginous sclerosis that you saw in the index case in the bone. That's the typical uh, key for osteonecrosis. On an MRI, which I didn't show, uh, the double line sign can be very suggestive. It's not always present. It's only seen in maybe 10 to 20% of cases, but you typically have a T2 low rim and a T2 inner brighter signal to suggest you know, this characteristic finding of osteonecrosis. But the key here is really to look for preservation of the fat. If you see geographic abnormal signal and there's normal fat in that signal, that's highly indicative of osteonecrosis or AVN. Now, there is a FICAT classification that I think everyone should be aware of. Uh, this is, you know, kind of stratifies the things that we look for as radiologists, you know, when we're looking for AVN or osteonecrosis and also some of the complications that can also occur. So stage zero is obviously normal. The X-ray and the MRI are going to look totally normal. On stage one, the X-ray will be normal, but you start to see bone marrow edema in the bone. So if it was involving the hip, which by, by the way is the most common place to get osteonecrosis, you would see bone marrow edema along the femoral head. The shoulder, as I showed you, is the second most common place in the body to get osteonecrosis. You would see marrow edema there. Stage two, which is what I showed you in this index case, you have a geographic defect of mixed sclerosis and lucency or osteopenia. So this geographic, well-defined, well-delineated area of sclerosis and lucency without articular collapse, that's stage two. Stage three is when we start to get articular collapse with a crescent sign or a subchondral lucency. Some people have thought this is uh, equivalent to a subchondral fracture. So you get a fracture just under the bone where near where it's articulating at the joint space. So that's known as the crescent sign and that's seen in stage three. And of course, stage four is end stage AVN or osteonecrosis. You get articular collapse, but more importantly, you start to get secondary DJD or degenerative joint, joint disease and osteoarthritis. So notice in all the other stages, stage zero, one, two, and three, only one side of the joint was involved, right? Like, you know, in the shoulder, only the humeral head was involved in the hip, only the femoral head would be involved. But in stage four, you start to see the other part of the joint, the other side of the joint that's involved. So in the case of the shoulder, the glenoid would start to have subchondral cysts and osteoarthritis. In the hip, you start to have uh, osteoarthritis, subchondral cysts and spurs and osteophytes in the acetabulum. So that's the most dreaded complication of AVN when you get secondary osteoarthritis. So this is a nice classification to sort of delineate, you know, how osteonecrosis or AVN progresses. Thank you so much for your attention. Please subscribe to our channel, support our mission of sharing free medical knowledge worldwide, and hope to see you next week for another MSK High Yield Unknown Case.